Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, August 19th. This is Gina McGuire. As we move through the next couple of days, temperatures will be increasing, and so will winds, and by Friday, the strongest winds are expected across Idaho, northern Nevada, and into northern Utah with low relative humidity. These gusty winds will impact ongoing fires across Idaho. Also, we may see a few isolated thunderstorms over parts of the central Utah mountains and into the Uinta Basin. However, again, coverage is likely expected to be isolated with most thunderstorms not producing much rainfall. Winds will also be stronger further south across Nevada and into Utah on Friday. However, fuels are not as critical further southeast, and also winds may not be as strong over parts of Nevada. If we look at the conditions yesterday, we had no lightning or shower activity across the Great Basin, and over the last seven days, western side has seen well below normal precipitation or little if any precipitation over the last week where there has been some shower activity over parts of southern and eastern Nevada into western Utah and southern Idaho. Over the last 14 days, many areas of the Great Basin did see at least some shower activity. Looking at the water vapor satellite image from this morning, the cold front and area of low pressure that brought gusty winds earlier this week to the area is now well off to the east, still keeping some breezy northwest flow over northern and eastern sections of the Great Basin. However, high pressure is building over the western side of the Great Basin, and this will allow for increasing temperatures over the next two days in all areas, along with continued dry weather and low relative humidity. From the National Weather Service, there are excessive heat warnings out for southern Nevada for these hotter temperatures. Temperatures will be about 5 to 8 degrees above normal. Also, there are air quality alerts over Idaho from the smoke from the wildfires, and now some fire weather watches starting to appear for the gusty winds and low humidity on Friday over parts of Wyoming and northwest Colorado. These conditions can also be expected across Idaho and parts of northern Utah. Significant fire potential today will remain moderate across Idaho and into western and northern Nevada, where the fuels are more critical and conditions have been drier. Further south and east, fuels are not quite as critical across Utah and western Wyoming, however they will be drying over the upcoming days. Looking at the surface conditions, temperatures will be increasing in all areas as high pressure builds in with highs reaching the mid to upper 90s over western and northern Nevada and near 110 in Las Vegas and now reaching the 80s over parts of Idaho. Winds today will be breezy out of the northwest, however most wind gusts will remain near or below 25 miles per hour. As we move into Thursday, we see drier air push across the Great Basin with continued low relative humidity in all areas and mainly moderate fire potential and you can see the drying over parts of Utah and western Wyoming as we continue with these warmer temperatures and low relative humidity. Temperatures on Thursday will also be increasing and probably will peak across Idaho this week with highs reaching the low 90s in the valleys and the low 80s in the upper elevations. Winds will start increasing on Thursday with gusts around 25 or 30 miles per hour in many locations however still remaining just below critical thresholds. As we move into Friday, we see the next area of low pressure drop into the northern portion of the Great Basin, and this will allow for the winds to increase in all areas of the Great Basin with continued low relative humidity. The most critical area for these gusty winds and low humidity will be across Idaho, where we already have ongoing fires. Further south and east, we'll likely still see these gusty winds above 35 miles per hour with low relative humidity. However, again, across Utah, fuels are not as critical and across western and northern Nevada, the wind gusts may not be as high. We also may see a few isolated thunderstorms over parts of the higher elevations of Utah on Friday. Relative humidity will drop into the single digits across much of Nevada, and again, the wind gusts will be increasing in all areas, with the strongest gusts likely across Idaho, however, may also extend into parts of northeast Nevada. If we move into this weekend, we see the dry air remain in place over much of the Great Basin. However, the moisture underneath the high pressure once it moves into Utah may remain in place this weekend for isolated thunderstorms across Utah as we move through Saturday and Sunday. As we move into early next week, we see this moisture push further north across all of Utah and into parts of southern and eastern Nevada and possibly southeast Idaho for an increase in showers and thunderstorms, especially across the eastern half of the Great Basin as we move towards Monday and Tuesday. There will be plenty of rainfall across Utah with these thunderstorms, therefore we'll see the fuel moistures continue to increase. However, as you move further north and west, the amount of rainfall is not as certain. Looking at the forecast amounts of precipitation through Friday, again not expecting any significant precipitation. As we move through Saturday and Sunday, most areas of the Great Basin will remain dry. However, we may see a little bit more shower activity develop, especially by Sunday or Monday, 
across Utah and that may bring some areas of localized precipitation. Now looking at fire danger indices across the Great Basin, ERCs continue to increase in all areas now with the warmer and drier conditions with ERCs most critical over central and southwest Idaho into northwest Nevada. Live fuel moisture continues to decrease across the Great Basin with most areas near or below normal. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, which takes us into the last week of August into early September, we may see below normal temperatures over parts of the Great Basin with near normal precipitation. However, this is still uncertain as we move later in this month. That concludes the briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.